Another day, another year is behind us. It's time to list off the top five best movies that I have seen in 2021. Number five, Boss Level. A lot of you may not have heard of this, but this is another one of those Groundhog Day movies where a shitty human being has the ability to reset the day if they die, and in doing so, learn the error of their ways. And I really do have a soft spot for these kinds of movies. Edge of Tomorrow, Happy Death Day, and now, Boss Level. The story about this one is that a former Special Forces agent has a target on his head. He doesn't know who orchestrated the hit, but he knows that he always dies at a certain time of the day, and that's as far as his investigation can take him. And he is being pursued by so many skilled assassins, and no matter how many times he tries, they always end up killing him. This movie is right up my alley. It's action-packed, it has a mystery, it has twists and turns, it has heart, it's weird, and it even has my kind of black comedy. My only real problem with the movie is that it did slow down here and there, and although I am fine with the ending that we have, I do wish that we got an epilogue. Instead, the movie just ends and you're left to piece the rest of the film together with your imagination. But at the same time, I did like that about the ending too. So yeah, not a perfect movie by any means, but this is a popcorn flick that feels like it was made just for me. A dumb movie with a smart concept and a heartfelt execution. That's boss level. Number 4. Malignant. This is a movie that I thought was decent when I first saw it, but upon further reflection, I couldn't help but like it more and more. This movie is directed by James Wan, and he usually makes serious horror movies, and this is his first attempt at injecting a horror film with some self-aware humour, and I don't think that is his strong suit like it is for someone like Sam Raimi. And unfortunately, that self-aware aspect of the film does make the movie worse. I also wasn't really a big fan of the characters. They were serviceable at best. Now that's the bad stuff quite major, but now it's time to talk about the pros. One of the things I loved about this movie is that it is a combination of all of James Wan's previous horror films. This movie is Saw, The Conjuring, and Insidious all rolled into one. The mystery is intriguing, the movie makes you think it's about one thing, and then it switches from being a supernatural horror movie, to a supernatural slasher movie, to a crime investigation, and then to all of them at once. This is a crazy experimental movie, and that's what's so fun about it. And on top of that, this movie had one of the craziest twists that I have ever seen in my life, and it's a twist that I will never forget. I'm not going to say any more in case you haven't seen it, but this is a movie that you should watch for yourself and see what you think, and the twist will make or break the movie for you. But for me, I loved the twist, and this was definitely a movie that got better the more I thought about it, and that's why it earns a spot on this list. Number 3. Ghostbusters Afterlife now, this is the Ghostbusters movie that we should have gotten the first time around instead of this abomination. Ghostbusters Afterlife isn't a perfect movie by any means, and it certainly has its problems, but in many ways, this felt like therapy to me. It was a very nice and tranquil movie to watch, especially after what we all had to go through with the Heartless 2016 remake. The movie has fan service, which has resulted in a lot of complaints, but I personally liked all of the fan service, with the exception of like two jokes, but most of it worked well to tell the story. And I liked the ending to this movie, and it was the ending that The Force Awakens should have had, but it also kind of took away from the conclusion to the main character's arc. But after the 2016 Ghostbusters and the third Ghostbusters movie that we never got, I really feel like we needed this ending. And after the movie was over, I actually felt like watching it again. It was a very warm and heartfelt movie where you could just see the passion in every frame of the film, and it really put a smile on my face. And the best way that I can describe this film is that it is just very nice. There was a bleeding wound on so much of us after the 2016 Ghostbusters released and started the whole woke period of films that felt like they were waving their finger at us, and this movie went back on it. And that's a big deal. This movie, just by existing, is pretty much Sony admitting that, yeah, maybe the whole woke trend wasn't a good idea. We started it with Ghostbusters, and now we're going to end it with Ghostbusters, because it lost us money. And I honestly don't think that the woke movies are going to last for much longer now. This essentially was a movie studio throwing in the towel, but even if you take that out of the equation, this was still a very nice movie that I had a great time watching and I wanted to see again once it was over. And that gives this movie a spot on this list. Number 2. A Quiet Place Part 2. Back in 2020, I was so ready to see this movie, but then the pandemic was on its way and the movie was pulled a mere two days before it was supposed to come out. I loved the first A Quiet Place and I was very cautious to see if this movie would be as good as the first. 
but it was. The family are still very well developed and seeing them cope with their loss and still try to push through was great. The way in which the world was expanded was also very well done and the message of the parents saving the kids was beautifully told in reverse by the end of the movie and it makes the film fit in perfect parallel with the first film with regards to its quality. The only other time a sequel to a horror movie was as good as the first film was The Conjuring 2 and when the movie was over, I actually wanted to immediately see a third film and by the looks of things, we are going to get a third movie but it's just not going to be directed by John Krasinski which is a shame but in spite of that, this movie was great and it serves as a wonderful continuation to the first movie and I can easily see myself watching them back to back and this was so good that it could have gotten the number one spot on this list but no, the number one best movie of 2021 is Zack Snyder's Justice League. Originally, I didn't have any faith in Zack Snyder's Justice League being any good, even though I did support the movement. Hashtag release the air cut. But then I saw the film, and I can't remember the last time I had so much fun watching a four hour movie. I was invested from beginning to end, even though, for the most part, I already knew the beats of the story. But Zack Snyder's Justice League reminds you just how important execution is. It presents all of its story points very differently, and some of which sneak up on you, even though going in, you knew they were going to happen. On my Versus video, I had a few people say that the movie is exactly the same as the Whedon film and that I was exaggerating. Well, at the end of the day, it is the same story with regards to the mother boxes, but this is where execution plays a big part in how a story is told. And the execution with the characters, the execution of the villains, the story, the pacing, the build-up, the visual storytelling, the cinematography, it massively changes the way the same story was told. It is the most memorable experience I've had watching a movie this year. I still remember watching this movie with my brothers and my projector and that we took a little break to get a snack two hours in, and then we came back and watched the rest, and there were even a lot of well-placed and funny jokes sprinkled throughout the film as well, and watching this movie with a surround system, it truly was an amazing experience and one I will never forget, and the fact that we were even able to see this version of the film at all was just crazy and indescribable. This movie never would have happened if it wasn't for fan support, and let's be honest here, a pandemic. It was probably the only good thing to come out of the pandemic, but this movie feels like a reward. A reward for all the patients, a reward after all the studio meddling, a reward for Zack Snyder and his wife. And this movie pretty much made a statement with regards to director's visions and how else streaming services can be utilized. This movie was the biggest event of the year, with even the Russo brothers showing their support to Zack Snyder. And I actually want to see the rest of the Snyderverse restored on HBO Max so we can see where the story would have gone. That would be the perfect place for it going forward, and a wonderful strategy for HBO Max who, let's face it, need more quantity and quality of content. I know the film is not perfect, I've already given my complaints in the versus video, but the good far outweighs the bad. And yes, all of this and more is why Zack Snyder's Justice League was the best comic book movie of 2021 as well as the best movie of 2021. Stay tuned, as next up we will be talking about the top 5 worst movies of 2021, and boy do I have a lot to say about that. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as I just did a Let's Binge Watch of Cobra Kai Season 4 on there, and I intend to do reviews of other movies and TV shows on there too. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help, and let's see if we can get this video to 1000 likes. And do this quick favour for me, if you click on any one of my videos, give them a thumbs up so we can try to get them to a thousand likes. And be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and the bell icon right next to it so you can stay up to date with all of my future videos. And I will see all of you next time. Take care.